higher you get it, the more you can see. That's something that I, I'm always thinking about when I'm flying. How much God, from His perspective, can see of everything, and to realize how big He is and how He's concerned with the, with the smallest person. In a lot of these places that are just extremely remote, they're waiting for somebody to share the gospel. We need people to go and visit these places. At first, when I first came out, I, I just wanted to see people accept the Lord and pray the sinner's prayer. I probably had well over 200 people that made decisions. But at the end of that year, I realized that I didn't know where any of those people were. I didn't know who they were. I wasn't following up. And I felt the Lord put it on my heart that from then on out, I wouldn't go someplace unless I could commit to go there weekly. One day, a fellow missionary from close by called me and said, Dan, there's this guy that is looking for a place to set up an airport to reach the Indian tribes. And he wanted to know if I was interested in that. And I just said, are you kidding me? There, there's one place that we go to that takes 24 hours to drive there. And it's only a 50 minute flight. You're alone there with God. It's, it's a great personal time for prayer. To think about the people and to lift them up individually. Out in these areas, they're, they're very friendly, very uh, receptive but they don't really know anything at all about Jesus Christ. And at first they think, you know, what are you guys doing here? And I always just ask them, please give me a chance to share with you the Gospel of John. And once they start realizing who Jesus is and, and what his word says, then I can start putting questions to them and asking, are you ready to meet your maker? Their eyes change, their outlook changes. They start realizing that they've been religious, but that they're lost. They know that the way they're living is not pleasing to God. I mean, it's amazing. You see them being born again through the living Word of God. And it's so neat to watch them transform and become members of the body of Christ. One of the Bible studies, it's at a prison. I like it a lot because I get to watch these guys. You know, they're, they're hard at first, but as, as the Word starts breaking down the barriers and softening their hearts, uh, they, they become born again through the Word. And so for about the last six years, one of the guys that we have now on our staff here at Rancho Maranatha, uh, he and I have become really close, uh, him inside the prison as the pastor, and, and me outside visiting once a week. He finally got out after 13 years of being in prison. My brother Daniel told me, come work with me and the team at Rancho Maranatha so we can win souls together and we daily minister the world in different communities. And I thank God because he moved his powerful hand in my life. Now, when I have problems, I don't run to the drug dealers. Now I run to bend my knees because the Lord is my only helper. We, we get to minister to soldiers, we get to minister to hitmen, we get to minister to drug lords. The truth is, although we're in places where there's a lot of danger, we, we're, we're always protected. I mean, God, He has a plan for us. And when we walk in that plan, we don't need to worry about things that, that could happen. I'm blessed that Dan can go to the mountains and um, it's hard for me when he leaves. <laughs> Sometimes I, I just stay outside praying until he comes back. People ask me a lot of times, why do you do what you do? Everything we do, we want to glorify Christ. That's our goal, always.